what the news says about the next generation. I don't care what the news says about this, like, growing Gen Z and all this. I don't care about any of that. What I know is God has his hand on that generation. Um, Mark chapter 4, if you have your Bibles, in verse 1, Jesus is preaching. He's giving the gospel. He's teaching, and he's preaching in a boat. And this is really the rise of Jesus' ministry. There's thousands of people that are surrounding him, and he's just teaching, and he's preaching to everyone that will hear him. But they want a miracle. And so Jesus turns and he tells them a story. And in Mark chapter 4, we're really going we're gonna to go through that here today. What's crazy about Mark 4 and this story is this is a story out of antiquity, but it speaks to you and me today. And here's why. What he's going to talk about, the story of the parable of the sower, that's really the story of any church service that's preached the gospel over the last 2,000 years. This story is you and me. There's four different people in this story, and every single person is one of those four. And so he's going to speak to us and teach us in this way. So Mark chapter 4, verse 3, he's going to read to you guys. Here we go. He says, listen, consider the sower who went out to sow. Verse 4. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and they devoured. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it didn't have much soil, and it grew up quickly. And since the soil wasn't deep, it fell apart. Verse 6. When the sun came up, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Verse 7. Other seed fell along the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it didn't produce any fruit. And verse 8. Still other seed fell on good ground, and it grew up producing fruit that increased 30, 60, and 100 times. Then he said, let anyone who has an ear let him hear. This is a deeply, deeply agrarian society. They would understand completely the idea of soil and seed and all of these different things. The parable of the soil is what I call it, all of it. It's the parable of the sower. And this is one of the very few parables actually that Jesus explains to them going down in verse 13 through 20. He just says really the, the word of God, the seed, the seed is the word of God. The, the word of God, it goes and it falls on four different types of soil. By the way, the soil is, is you and me. It's the soil of our hearts, the soil of our souls. And, and he says the first seed that falls, it falls on a path and Satan comes in and he takes it away. Again, there's four types of people. That's one of us here today. And he says another part of the seed, it falls on a rocky ground. And there's some success there, but then all of a sudden it, it just kind of withers and, and it dies. And he says the word falls on thorny bushes and it gets choked out. And then the word falls on good soil and it produces a huge amount of fruit. And so this is an incredible story and it speaks to each and every one of us today because again, this is our story. But what does it really mean for us? What do we need to get out of this story? The overall message of this story is that good soil is produced by our hearts, not by our hands. That good soil, which is our heart, which is our soul, which is who we are inside of ourselves, is produced by what's in us, not by what we do. Some of you guys, you believe and you hope and you dream that God loves you because maybe you're a good person or maybe you do the right things, but that's not the case at all because the Bible tells us that all of us are wicked, all of us have no righteousness inside of us, that it's by Jesus' blood that we can be made pure and holy, that you can do all the right things in the world and still not make it, that it's our heart that matters. And so I guess really my question today more than anything else is how's your heart? Like how is the soil of your soul? How, how is, but here's the true question. What is your heart? How is your heart doing? How is the soil inside of your soul? Because that's the thing that we like to ignore a lot. We like to not think about that. We can come and serve on Wednesday night. We can come and serve on Sunday morning. We can go a lot. We can serve with the students. We can serve in kids ministry. But I hope you understand that it's not the things that you do. It's what God's done for you.